my top five standalone tools, this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Moving. Today we're going to be going over my top five Metasploit standalone tools. So everybody knows about Metasploit or MSF Console and MSF Payload and, and some of these other things, but we're going to be talking first about MSF Tidy. Now, all of the devs on Metasploit um, and Rapid7 will love me for talking about MS MSF Tidy first because what it does is basically will take a module that you've written or you want to submit to Metasploit and make sure that it conforms to their standards. So does it have spaces on the end? Does it have whatever um, incorrect uh, configuration or, or requires wrong? So it'll look at your, your custom built um, mod module and then when it, when it outputs these errors, you can go and correct them before you submit it to Metasploit before you submit it on GitHub. And that's actually what we'll be doing in a later episode on making our own metas or our own exploit, our own modules, and then submitting them up to, up to GitHub and getting them put into Metasploit as a whole. So the first tool that I'm gonna be going over, um, actually in the console, is MSF Payload. So MSF Tidy, you run it and it, and it just goes and tells you the errors. Um, MSF Payload will generate a payload so let me show you real quick. So first off, we're in the tools directory of, of Metasploit. All of the standalone tools except for um, MSF Payload and MSF Encode are in there. So let's go back real quick and MS, MSF Payload. We do dash H. All of the things in Metasploit, at least 99.9% .9 of them, and if you find one, let me know, that doesn't have it, has a dash H. So if you ever run into something or a, or a function or a thing that you don't know how it works, just add a tack H to it and you'll usually get some kind of information on how to, how to use it. So as we can see, .msf payload has the option saying we need to specify a payload. So we're gonna go with Windows, Interpreter. Before I go into this real quick, I wanna show you the, that you can actually just list all of payloads. So there are a ton of them. So as we can see here, we're gonna scroll up real quick. You can see that there are absolutely a ton of different Windows payloads, and we'll scroll up further. Python payloads, there's even an Android payload, PHP, OS X. Pretty much every kind of show code that you would want to run on a system is in um, the possible payload types. Now, we're going to just go with Windows Interpreter Reverse TCP. Next, what we have to do is specify the options that go along with this. Now, I already know these options and I'll show you a way that you can actually see what these options are later, but let's, let's just go with the ones that I know. Lhost, which is the host that we're actually going to have the payload talk back to since it's a reverse TCP connection, equals 192.168.1.100. Next, we give it an L port. So 5555, please don't ever do this. <laughs> and then we'd say that we want to make it in, into an executable with the, with the X and then just literally just cat it or put it into a file, bob.exe. So if it's successful, once this is done, it will show that, hey, it's created the payload, its size is 290 bytes, the options that you specified is this. Real easy. Now, when you do that, there's absolutely no encoding added to this binary. And what it's doing is, is shoving shellcode, the shellcode you specified, into a template. Now, a template in, in Metasploit context is essentially an EXE, which in this case is Apache Bench, which is a, a, a GUI uh, small little binary that doesn't pop up any shell or, or command prompt on a Windows box that was pulled down from uh, the Apache project and put into the Metasploit uh, project, and it's shoving the shellcode into that binary. Now, if you run this just as we have, there is no encoding at all onto the, um, the shellcode inside of the binary itself. So if someone took this um, shellcode, they could line for line look at it without having to 
have any kind of um, you know reverse engineering knowledge or anything. It's just shoving the shellcode directly in. Um, what you can do is add encoding. Now MSF encode. Um, before I get too far into this, MSF encode is not a way to bypass antivirus. It encodes shellcode so that it works better with exploits. Now, how we've done it right now, we're essentially not using an exploit, we're using an executable. But if you're inside of an exploit module, let's say an HTTP exploit, where the only things that you can use is ASCII text in this exploit, you can actually use MSF and code to make ASCII characters only for your show code, which is awesome. So getting that out of the way. Next up um, is virus total on our tools list. So let's go in there real quick. This is actually a new one. So if you don't see this in your current um, download or install of Metasploit, um, just do an MSF update or get, get pull and you'll, you'll actually have all of the information you need. So we're gonna do a dash H. If you're not familiar with VirusTotal, what it is is an online service um, that was actually bought by Google that will scan binaries, scan pretty much any kind of file that you want to submit to it, um, and looking for maliciousness of it and see if, it, if any of these antiviruses that it supports, all 46 or 42 of them, um, that if any of them detect whatever binary you're submitting to it. So if you submit, you know, standard reverse TCP Metasploit, it's going to fire off uh, swart.t or whatever, swart n um, in 99.9% .9 of those. Awesome. So virus total, what it does is takes the hash if you do a dash q. So let's do dash q dash f to file name and let's give it our bob.exe. So what this is doing is hashing bob.exe taking a uh, an, sort of an image of it, uh, a hash, and then submitting that hash to virus total and saying, does it detect? Or do you know about this binary? And wait for the, so still in the queue. What will happen is it's going to give us a result back saying that there, are, there aren't zero detections because every time you do an MSF payload, what it does is generates a, a new shellcode, new binary and, and puts it up there. So the cool thing is like you'll have a binary, a different binary every time. But if you don't do the dash Q, what it'll do is actually submit that full executable all the way up to virus total and you'll get all the detections. So if you want to see how well your, your custom shellcode or your custom um, built binary uh, turns out to be, you can submit it up to virus total very easily with this code. So that's that. Um, we're gonna move on to the PS exec one. So let's just do ps exec, do a dash h. So it takes, it takes a host, it takes an exe, a username and password. The great thing about this is that this is a standalone tool. So quite literally you can take the Ruby code out of this, move it to a Windows box that has Ruby on it and um, the gem rex or librex, and then run ps exec without any, any install of Metasploit. So how this can be useful is say you're in an instance where, um, where you have a box that isn't connected to the internet and you can copy some of this over and you can install Ruby or whatever. You can, without having all of the detectable portions of Metasploit, use PSDZEC with, with hashes instead of passwords. So what do you think? Hit me up at msf at hack5.org and stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. Thanks again to you and Hack5 for supporting this show. If you want to support us even further, go to hackshop.com, H-A-K-shop.com, and submit your coupon code MOVIX for uh, Metasploit Minute Cow Say stickers. Awesome. Until then, I'm MOVIX, and I'll be hacking to the cows come home. My top five, my, my top five, ah.